what I will be uh, primarily focusing on today is to draw, um, is to identify the fact that human security can also explain um, action among among refugees in asylum countries or host countries. More specifically, I'll be talking about how the refugee population in host countries enhance civil society activism. But then furthermore, um, uh, talk about what are the conditions that sort of mediate the relationship between refugee populations in host countries and civil society activism. Um, so going back to the determinants of refugee outflows, as I just mentioned, the, the, the political science research has identified two prominent factors. So conflict, now we are talking about conflict within countries as well as conflict between countries that threaten um, security of individuals, which then may lead to higher levels of refugee outflows. Um, followed by state repression. So state violation of human rights could also be yet another factor that may lead, that may threaten human security of individuals leading to high levels of refugee outflows. Anecdotally, if we think about Syria, for instance, right, high levels of uh, conflict, uh, um, as well as state repression, where uh, you know the most recent Amnesty International report documents uh, human rights violation conducted by the regime on its citizens that could account for the outflow of refugees that we see from, from that country. Of course, economists have also identified other factors that could play a role uh, as to uh, why people move from one country to another. But as I mentioned, primarily looking at the consequences of refugee inflow in host countries here. Um, so I'm trying to uh, highlight the fact that pursuit of human security is also important for the, for the refugee population among host countries. Now, in host countries, I argue presence of high levels of refugee population may enhance the overall level of civil society activism. Question is why? Well, one of the reasons being, as we know, that the, the refugee population may not uh, have the right to vote, for instance. However, they are very much affected by the living conditions in the, uh, the, the asylum countries or the host countries. For, so, for instance, uh, the domestic laws, the living conditions, uh, that affects them as well. Um, so they're more likely to be active in civil society in order to bring attention to their needs and preferences uh, in pursuit of human security. So uh, going back to Maslow, in pursuit of human security, they may, uh, you know, this is one of the few ways in which they can bring attention to their plight. Um, additionally, there might be similar concerns where, con where the concerns of the refugee population may be similar in some circumstances to that of the domestic population, um, explaining uh, ways in which perhaps um, where you know, the two different groups uh, may be able to bring attention to their common needs and sort of make the government uh, be more responsive to their needs in, 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 in that sense. The first hypothesis then uh, that I, I'm trying to look at here is uh, that high levels of refugee population in asylum countries increase civil society participation overall. Now, while that may be the case, uh, one has to recognize that domestic structures within the host countries may also come into play. Um, so what I'm looking at here is, is how um, economic inequality may condition the effect of the refugee population on civil society activism. Um, High levels of inequality, I argue, reduces the effect of refugee population on civil society participation. If the host or the asylum countries is one that also has high levels of inequality, the government may especially uh, 
you know, be hesitant, allowing for high levels of civil society activism for fear of high levels of redistribution. Essentially, that puts a lot more pressure on the government because now you have a circumstance where not only do you have high levels of inequality, which may put pressure for high levels of, re of redistribution, but also the fact that you have a large refugee population may put additional pressures. So the two factors taken together uh, may sort of, or high levels of inequality may dampen the effect of uh, of refugee population on civil society activism. So the second hypothesis or the second part of the first hypothesis that I'm looking at here is that high levels of inequality reduce the effect of refugee population on civil society participation. Um, this is a time series analysis on 41 African countries. So essentially this is largely guided by the countries I have data on from 1990 to 2011. The primary dependent variable is uh, civil society activism. The data sources are all listed here. Uh, so I look at the civil society index overall as well as its components. Uh, the primary independent variable, the total number of refugee inflows uh, in countries of asylum. Uh, the other in, in, uh, independent variable, the level of inequality, followed by some of the standard controls that are usually included, GDP per capita, size of the urban population, and the level of democracy. Um, and so if you look at uh, the results here, we'll start from, uh, we'll start with the control variables. If you look at the democracy variable, uh, higher levels mean high, um, higher numbers mean higher levels of democracy. It's positively associated with civil uh, society activism. Um, and that makes sense. Countries that are more open will allow for higher civil society activism. Um, percentage of urban population, higher the percentage of urban population, higher levels of civil society activism. Uh, having a more urban population may make it easier for groups to come together. Um, high levels of GDP is associated with lower levels of civil society activism, plausibly because if income levels are high, then perhaps uh, that may explain why people may not be as motivated to be active since the country overall is doing quite well economically. Inequality, we see high levels of inequality associated with high levels of civil society activism. Uh, that may explain, that may be explained by the fact that if there is a high level of inequality, uh, people have more grievances. And so perhaps that could explain the high level of civil society activism. Um, high levels of, of, uh, of refugee population is also positively associated with high levels of activism as the first, uh, first uh, hypothesis uh, stated. And then when we look at the interaction variable, it's negative and statistically significant. So if we were to graph that, what you see here is that as the level of inequality increases, the effect of refugee population in host countries sort of, um, it, it dampens the effect of, of, of the refugee population in host countries on civil society, right? So at high levels of inequality, um, refugee population, the size of the refugee population in host countries is, is associated with lower levels of civil um, society activism. So what does this mean? Um, we know what we know in terms of human security and, and outflows of refugee is that conflict and state repression is especially play an important role. Uh, but this sort of explains the fact that human security is also important when we look at uh, the refugee population in host countries in that being active is one of the ways in which they can perhaps bring attention to their needs, to their preferences, given that they may not have other rights that uh, the that the native population may have. Um, in terms of policy implications, overall, uh, it enhances engagement within society. And to the extent that this can actually bring the government's attention to some of the needs of not just the refugee population, but also for the citizens as a whole, it, it may enhance the accountability uh, 
of the government. So in that sense, it could be beneficial both for the domestic population as well as for the refugee population. However, we want to keep in mind that the economic structure of the host country also makes a difference. More specifically, high levels of inequality may dampen the effect of refugee inflows on civil society. So efforts to address inequality may be especially important um, in that it, it could make it easier or it, 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 it could uh, lower levels of inequality may make it so that not just the refugee population but also the domestic population they are more likely to be able to operate in a more open environment uh, with that i will conclude my talk and uh, thank you for listening <laughs>